Hey, Anissa here with Firehouse Education and this week's Ask Anissa video column. And this week, our question came uh, from YouTube and a comment on one of my videos. And the question came in from Paul. And Paul said, good info, thank you. Since we are new in contents restoration department, we have a question. How can you do an estimate for contents if the house is packed with all kinds of household items? Homeowners and adjusters are asking for estimates before pack out. Do you have a video regards that question? Well, yes, Paul. Yes, I do have a video and here it is. <laughs> Actually, I do think I have a couple other videos on the channel. I'll look for that. If I can find them, I'll, I'll put a link in the comments below uh, talking about estimating. But this is really tricky. So the couple things I want to talk about here right off the bat, um, and especially if you're new to content. So an adjuster asking for an estimate, they're often trying to do what's called setting a reserve, which they're actually legally have to do um, so that they can say, hey, it's, you know, we've had a, a loss. It's going to be approximately this much for contents I need to set aside and this much for structure or reconstruction, repair, mitigation that I need to set aside. So they're actually required by law to set a reserve. So they're trying to get an idea of that because they have a certain amount of time. They have to get that reserve set right away. Okay. So that's usually um, why the adjuster is asking. For a homeowner, they're asking because, well, this is potentially, hopefully the first time they've ever dealt with this and they don't understand where, you know, how all the money's working and they want to make sure that their insurance company's covering what you're saying it's going to cost to take care of their contents. All right. So that being said, oftentimes if we can talk with the adjuster and the adjuster sets a reserve, it will often reassure the homeowner that everything's okay, policy limits are good and that sort of thing. So sometimes that kind of relieves that tension from the homeowner. And you know what? Sometimes a homeowner is just asking for an estimate because they're wanting to get a check from their insurance company. That does happen. Doesn't happen very often, um, I don't believe, but it can. So that being said, estimating a contents job is really, really tough. And the biggest thing you're going to need to be able to do this correctly is an experience, unfortunately. Um, you know, I can walk into a job and pretty much go, okay, that's going to be $35,000. Um, Laundry is probably going to be around $18,000. Packout is going to be $11,000 roughly. And I always estimate and I say approximately. Don't ever give a hard number when you do get to the point where you're giving numbers. But without having experience and going out and getting having some jobs, jobs under your belt, it, that makes it a little tough. So a couple things that I would suggest to you. One is if you have other contents jobs that you have done, be analyzing those jobs. Um, average, take a look at how many boxes that you had, how many hours that you worked on the job and get an average for how much that job costs. So it gives you a little bit of like starting base point. The other thing is if there's a restoration company that maybe you're friends with or associated with in a uh, trade network that maybe you they'll willing to share one, uh, some of their content estimates with you that you could take a look at and get an idea for how you know again how many boxes how many hours what the processing was now that being said if there's a job where i have lots and lots of household things i mean i've done jobs where literally there is not more than two inches of any given space on a wall not covered with knickknack or bric-a-brac or decor or I've done many hoarder homes, which I you know, know some of you have probably delved into. Maybe you haven't yet being new, but don't worry, you'll get there. A, a, a home that's in a hoarder situation, that is not anything I would remotely estimate. And I would have a big Mondo conversation with my adjuster on scene if that's what I'm coming into, because we're gonna have a conversation about understanding that is definitely going to cost. That's not gonna be a normal type of content job, okay? So, when you are dealing with um, the contents as well, and you're talking about estimating, you've got two different scenarios, right? You've got the pack out and the clean, and then and 
pack back and storage and then you've got the ones that are just the clean in places so those again would be two very different types of jobs that if you could get a look at uh, some estimates that would really help you out I think to be able to like I said take a look get kind of a base established but unfortunately I don't have a magic formula for you or a magic answer in regards to that estimating it really does take some experience it's one of the biggest things that I actually teach in my class is how to identify items how to identify are they high priced items how to identify you know are items special handle so if you have a specialty item then you know that's going to be higher price that's not just a standard obviously buy the box or buy the item uh, set price like say an exactimate or a time and material situation that's probably going to be a bid item so you kind of need to be familiar with those types of items and what what to look for to identify them and to know you know when you walk into a home okay that's crystal there or that's you know that's Mikasa you need to be able to educate yourself if you will on the types of contents that people have in their houses and by the way this also depends another reason why I couldn't just give you a firm is it depends on where you do your restoration work are you restoring homes in Beverly Hills or are you restoring homes you know in Cypress California are you restoring homes in you know Athol Idaho or restoring homes downtown Seattle Washington very vast difference depending on the part of the country that you're in or country that you're in as far as uh, values of items okay so there's that the other thing I want to talk about is you know especially I know I mentioned you, you said in your email or your your comment that there was a lot of household items and I talked about like a hoarder house when you get into some situations where there's just mass amount of contents if if it has been a medium to heavy fire you're going to have to be able to determine what items can you even clean, right? You need to be able to walk on the job site and say, okay, yeah, this room is pretty much going to be a destroyed, I believe, or I don't think there's much I can do with this room or this item, you know, due to this kind of damage, it's not able to be cleaned. And that is just going to come from experience and or training which again is one of the big things that I teach in my uh, contents uh, course that I have. So, you know, it, it, you're gonna have to get some experience under your belt. Like I said, if you've got somebody in the industry, maybe another friend that does content restoration that's willing to even let you go on a job, uh, that would be fabulous. And you're gonna need to do some research. Do yourself a favor and Google some of these things and really find out what different items can cost to replace okay all right well i hope that answered your question i know i didn't exactly give you a straight answer but that's not really a question that you can give a straight answer to um, i will go look on the channel and i will see if i've got some more videos that i can post uh, down in the description so maybe you can go i can directly point you to those that will help you with some of that like talking about logging destroyed items on a job so you know in order to give that estimate you've got to have two parts of the education and training right experience which is the destroyed items so you can tell what's salvageable and what's not and the other is valuing of items and having an idea of base of how many boxes or how many hours that it would take to process a job okay all right well thank you so much for the comment and question uh, please be sure and email me your questions and use at firehouseeducation.com and be one of those super cool kids be subscribed to rnrmagonline.com's e-newsletter so you get this and lots of other goodies in your email inbox and if you're on the youtube channel give me a thumbs up and if you're not on the youtube channel you should hop on over to youtube.com type in firehouse education subscribe to my channel ring that little bell so you get notification when I put up new videos.